With the custom subassemblies created, we can now begin to design our corridor. We're going to go in and create an assembly. Our road that we're going to create is going to have two regions. Uh, the first region, of course, is going to be the roadway. The second is going to be the bridge section. Uh, so I'll need two assemblies for this. If I go take a look at my tool palettes on the bridge tab, I don't really have anything that, that really fits my design criteria. So I went ahead and created a totally different one, uh, a custom one inside the subassembly composer. I'm going to import that by going to the insert tab and the import panel and select import subassemblies. In this dialog box, I have the option to select where I want to import my subassembly. And I need to go out, of course, and pick the source file, which is a PKT file. Once I open up the catalog, I'll see that it actually has been imported into my custom tools. And I'll click on the little blue icon and you'll see my cursor turn into an eyedropper. That's called eyedrop technology. And I'll drag it onto my tool palette. Now, just like any other subassembly, I can select it on my tool palette and then attach it to my assembly. And you'll see we have our custom bridge subassembly. Now, before I create the assembly for my roadway cross section, uh, I need to go ahead and perform the same task for the median that we created earlier. So again, on the insert tab of the ribbon, I'll go pick our median PKT file, open it. I want to bring it into medians and bring it into my imported tools. That's going to automatically open the catalog library again. And once again, I'll use the eyedrop technology to bring this over into the medians tab of my tool palettes. Now that that's imported successfully, I'm going to go down here and take a look at the typical cross section uh, that we've been provided. And on the Home tab, I'll go back to the Create Design panel and select uh, Create Assembly. And I'm going to name this Road Section. This is going to be the assembly again for our roadway design. The first thing I want to do is drop in our traffic separator. You'll see our input parameters. I accidentally widened that and lost it, so let's click on it again. You'll see the input parameters that we created when we were building uh, this subassembly. It is modified from the one in the prior lesson. Uh, I went back in and added uh, some base and sub-base depth there. And now I will go in and attach my lane. We're going to use the Lane Super Elevation AOR. Uh, this particular one, it has super elevation in the name of the subassembly, but it doesn't have to be hooked to any kind of super elevation data. I'm using it basically to get the materials that I need and the behavior that I'd like. We'll go in and attach it at the edge of Travelway. You'll see I have gone ahead and set the depth correctly. If I take a look, I'll see that uh, for my shoulder, I have a narrower, or excuse me, a, a less, a thinner depth of asphalt. So I'll need to go in and change my width, of course, and then change my pavement one depth, and then my base depth as well. If 
All right, I went ahead and put that as pavement two to match what we did in the original travel lane. And I'm giving these uh, pavement one and our sub base, I'm giving them a depth of 0 0.0001, just some kind of minuscule number because Civil 3D really doesn't like values of zero when it's expecting a number. I'm going to take this and mirror it about the median that we created. So I'll have my design the same on left and right sides. I don't have to go in and redefine my depths. Now it's time to add the daylight subassembly. This is going to be accomplished using the daylight basin subassembly. Daylight Basin gives me a nice four slope, gives me a basin in cut and fill, uh, then it gives me a berm in fill if needed. And you'll see that it comes in defaulting, it doesn't look exactly like uh, what we have defined above, so I'm going to need to go in and change some of these parameters. I'm going to change my four slope slope to a 10 to 1 slope. And you can just enter 10. Uh, there's no need to enter the colon 1 to get the 10 to 1. My four slope width is going to be 5 meters. My basin depth will be 1 meter. My basin slope is going to be a 2 to 1. Again, you can just enter the number 2. That basin width should actually be 2. My berm width should be 2 meters as well. And then I'm going to have a cut slope of 2 to 1 and a fill slope of 4 to 1. So there's a good bit of logic going on uh, when these assemblies are applied to a corridor. So now that I've got it created there, I'm going to use the, I'm going to check my measurements there, and I'm going to use the mirror functionality just like I did earlier so I don't have to recreate that. Just going to attach it over there on the left hand side. And those are our assemblies.